The internet's crazy. If you've ever streamed content live, watched a live stream, or heard the phrase live streaming in passing, then you've undoubtedly heard of Twitch. Yes, who hasn't? Twitch is like the big famous one. You don't know what they do there, do you? Not as such, no. Since its creation in 2011, Twitch has had a virtual monopoly on the streaming industry for over a decade, but it's not for a lack of effort. Many others have thrown their hat into the ring in the hopes of being named the Twitch killer, though with limited success. Twitch is owned by Amazon, right? Like, Amazon has some deep pockets. Even YouTube, they're like trying to get into live streaming and you can go live on YouTube and stuff, but everyone does it on Twitch, no? Correct. In 2022, Twitch had a 73% market share, followed by YouTube in second place with 21%, and Facebook Gaming, who were just happy to be mentioned in the report. Yeah, never heard of Facebook Gaming. I don't even use Facebook. Fuck Facebook. Clearly, Twitch must have been doing something right, since nobody was able to steal their viewers. When Microsoft owned Mixer and signed Ninja to a $50 million exclusive contract. God damn. Like, Ninja, does Ninja, does he do stuff anymore? Like, I, I, I feel, didn't he kind of dropped off, right? But does he really give a f he got $50 million. He is sorted for life. In 2019, poaching one of Twitch's biggest streamers, it was believed that Mixer might finally be the Twitch killer that people had just spent years waiting for. Ah, uh, is Mixer still around? Is Mixer still a thing? If it is, I've never heard of it. I've never been on it. I don't watch Ninja. So maybe he's streaming on Mixer. Maybe he's having a great time over there and he's super famous on Mixer. But... I don't think so. Of course, considering that the last time any of you heard that site mentioned was in the context of, hey, whatever happened to Mixer, that obviously did not happen. A year down the line, Mixer was shut down, but at least it survived longer than Queeby. What the fuck's Queeby? No one knows. But despite their success, Twitch hasn't been without its share of controversies. There have been multiple mass shootings streamed live on the platform. Oh my lord, really? Though these have happened on other streaming sites as well, and honestly, I don't think that they can really be held responsible. No, they can't. I mean, like, the people who do mass shootings, they're fucking monsters. And if they're streaming it, what the fuck's wrong with them? There was that one in New Zealand, right? The guy streamed it on like Facebook Live or something insane. Why is that? What the fuck's wrong with you? I mean, maybe in some broader societal way, but that's a completely different topic. However, one of the biggest issues people have with Twitch is their content moderation. They are seen as being heavy-handed with their rules and inconsistent with their enforcement. The terms of service forbid the sorts of things that you would usually expect, like racist, sexist, and homophobic slurs, but their harassment policy goes much further than that. For example, in 2020, they added incel, virgin, and simp to the list of words that can get streamers and members of chat banned if they're used as insults. <laughs> Really? Chill the fuck out. Like, it's always like, ah, oh, you simp. Grow a thicker skin. They also instituted a policy regarding the spread of harmful misinformation and would shut down any account that repeatedly spread dangerous lies. See, now that seems much more reasonable. If an account is spreading dangerous lies, I completely agree that it should be shut down. If an account's like, yo, yo, simp face, that's fine. Hey. Just before we continue with today's video, I do want to tell you that it's sponsored by the wonderful people over at Squarespace, which is an all-in-one platform for entrepreneurs from beginners to seasoned pros. Look, no matter how busy you are, and I know something about being busy, Squarespace make it easy to create a stunning website, connect with your audience, and even sell products or services, and it's all under your control. Look. Let me tell you what is so good about Squarespace. First up is their Fluid Engine. It's a bit of a magic wand for website design. Look, I'm not a tech whiz. I'm definitely not a design whiz. I don't know anything about that. But Squarespace, Fluid Engine is going to drag and drop magic. You just go in there, you choose the template, and then you use Fluid Engine to customize it. Unleash your creativity without even breaking a sweat. It's all in one place. It's all very easy to do. Plus, there's extensions, and these can connect your site to third-party tools, which makes your website's functionality pretty much limitless. No more, oh, I wish my site could do this, because it can with Squarespace extensions. At Squarespace, they've also got courses, so you can create and sell a course online. Professional layout, custom videos, thanks to Fluid Engine design that looks great. And here's the best part. You can set the price, one-time fee, maybe a subscription, whatever you want. Share your knowledge and make it work for you with Squarespace courses. So, Squarespace, get on it. Go to squarespace.com slash blaze for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the promo code blaze to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now back to today's video. Like I said, though, these policies were not enforced equally. The larger a streamer was, the more likely they were to get away with violating the rules. Uh. YouTube, can't you learn something, please? Why can I violate all the rules, YouTube? Come on. You should treat me differently because I have more subscribers than most people. That's sarcasm, but it would also be handy, wouldn't it? There was also little to no transparency, so people would get their accounts temporarily or permanently banned without knowing why and without having any sort of recourse. It's weird, like, 
the the level of support sometimes is really weird. Like I have like someone at YouTube who like you know looks after me a bit. Like we occasionally chat on the phone, or if I have some problem, I can write to them. But like the uh, the AdSense side of things, like where I get all my money, is a, is a completely different thing. And I was like, my bank like was sold to another bank, and so my account, like, my bank was sold to another account, so my account details changed, and it took me like three months. <laughs> to get it sorted like i was like you keep trying to issue a payment i've updated my payment settings but you keep trying to issue it to all my old bang and it keeps being sent back and i have just some generic random like chat support with someone who's like hi yeah thank you for contacting support we're gonna look into this right away and i'm like this isn't a small amount of money we're talking about here like flex alert Flex alert. You could say it's quite a large amount of money. And no one's like, maybe we should give him a ring and figure this out because it's been a couple of months since he's got paid. <laughs> Come on. Like, what the f***? Show me the money! While many saw Twitch as being run by overzealous yet inconsistent censors who were the enemy of free speech, in late 2022 a bigger problem emerged. The site which had previously offered all creators a 70-30 revenue share on subscriptions was switching to a 50-50 revenue share for anyone bringing in over 100,000 per year in revenue. That's a 29% pay cut that came out of nowhere, pushing streamers from merely disgruntled to downright furious. I mean, that's scary, isn't it? Like, because this is how I make my money, not with like Twitch and 7030. YouTube gives you, I think, 55 to 40. Like, they take 45 and we take 55. So it's quite nice. It's like, but it's, you know, if they were suddenly like, well, actually, we're going to keep like most of it, I'll be like, okay, there's nothing I can do. I just guess I have to make less money. That, that's really intense. The stage was set for a new contender to enter the fray and give all of those angry streamers a safe and happy home. And if that's what's actually happened, we wouldn't be talking about it on this channel. No, because on this channel we like to sh** on things. Questionable origins. On October the 18th, a month after Twitch announced their massive pay cuts for their creators, Kick was founded. Oh, Kick. Isn't this- wait. Wait, wait, wait. There's ones people tell me to get onto um, whenever I complain that YouTube's just being a bit, you know, sensitive. One of them is Rumble, and I looked into that, and it just seems to be, like, a place for, it, I don't know, it seems a bit intense. Like, everyone's just, like, really politi political on there. And I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> I don't want that. And then Kick, isn't that the one that's founded by, like, a gambling company? <sighs> Bloody hell, there you go, spoiling my fun again. Or have I got that? No, that's definitely the right way around, because Rumble is definitely the, the political one. And then Kick is, like... I thought this was something to do with slots. Like, weren't people playing slots on Twitch and Twitch were like, no. And Kick was founded from, like, some online casino in, like, Belize or some sh** like that. Read the script. This new streaming service wasn't actually announced until December. But remember that date for a moment because there was something else going on with Twitch. Amidst all of the other controversies, there was a war being waged on Twitch, pitching creator against creator. There was a movement involving a number of creators, but largely spearheaded by Pokemane, to ban gambling streams entirely from the platform. These streams considered people sitting at their computer burning through millions of dollars while playing online slots. I genuinely don't understand why anybody would want to watch that since it's 100% luck based, but the streams obviously did well. Isn't some of the controversy that it wasn't luck-based? Like, all allegedly, all allegedly, and just something I vaguely heard. But wasn't it that some casinos were paying people to stream and then stacking the odds in their favor so they'd win money and then people would go to sign up to the casinos and then lose money? And then that money that they're losing is obviously where the casino makes money and they pay it back to the people promoting it, which is like, in my opinion, fucking mad unethical. The issue was that, yeah, the <laughs> There was, uh, a, like, I don't know why, like, the number of times I've told my, my business guy. The schmoopy booby came in a little over budget. To be like, yo, no, uh, no sponsors for, like, casinos. And the other day, like, I don't know, somebody who works for him or whatever was just like, hey, do you want to do this, like, casino, like, that's online and on crypto? And I'm like, are you smoking crack? Is it crack? Is that what you smoke? Do you smoke crack? No, I don't want to tell my audience to go over to some dodgy online crypto casino and gamble their money away and lose their money. Uh, uh, do you know nothing about me? Like, we've worked together for a while. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I think I replied, like, even if they gave me a million dollars, I wouldn't do it. And honestly, I wouldn't, because fuck that. The issue was that streaming platforms cater to a younger audience. Almost 75% of Twitch users are under 35, with over 40% being 16 to 24. Sadly, there's no good data about what percent are under 18, but based on those numbers, it has to be at least 10%. The actual number would be higher than reported anyway, because there's nothing to stop somebody from just lying about their age to avoid content restrictions. Yeah, you go to a website, are you over 18? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, 
when I was under 80? Yes, 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 of course I am. <laughs> Are you going to ask follow-up questions? No. <laughs>
it's not just the servers and stuff. They organize all of the ads. Like, I do sponsorships, right? You've probably seen a sponsorship in this video. Setting up that one thing is complicated. There's reviews, there's contracts, there's all of this stuff that I don't really do myself, but I know that people who work with me spend a long time doing. Thank you, guys. Um, but it's like, yeah, with YouTube, you're just like, boom, click. Do you want monetization? Yes. And then Google, and then Google just send you a fat bank transfer every month. I would say check, but it's not the 90s. Although apparently Americans get checks. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, well, you take it down to the bank. But Kick was going to do even better, offering streamers a 95-5 split. That sounds completely insane and unsustainable, but as far as I can tell, they have honored that agreement and it's still the revenue split being offered. And Kick was going to take it a lot further. Lots of people dream of being successful streamers, but breaking into the scene can be really hard. It takes a lot of time to build up a following and it's difficult to dedicate that amount of time to something that isn't making money. To combat that problem and allow creators more opportunity to build community by actively streaming, they also offer a pay rate of $16 dollars an hour to anyone who streams at least four hours a day 30 days a month is that r what is that really like no matter your size size matters not that's incredible if i was starting holy shit, if i was starting my journey now and i wasn't making any money wait you can really go on kick and stream 30 days a month and you just stream four hours a day which i know is hard work but if you're motivated then you're making like 60 something bucks a day which i know is not a lot but it's only four hours and you got to do it 30 days a month which is quite a lot but still i would be on that sh so hard the only other rules are that your webcam has to be on your face while you stream and you need to be 18 and you have to be awake so there goes my dream of getting paid to let people watch me sleep if you're thinking that all sounded too good to be true you aren't alone rumors began spreading about who was actually behind the streaming platform there was a lot of speculation but people's suspicions were confirmed in march when the apps release was released on the apple's uh, on apple's app store in order to get listed on the app store they had to submit the full legal name of the company that owned the app a few shell companies later i'm like yeah can't you just like obfuscate that like just be like just start a different company and then be like well yeah it's owned by this and but then i guess someone's like they can figure it out a few shell companies later it is discovered that the owners of kick were ed craven and bajan tarani the co-founders of stake using gambling streamers to advertise was making them enough money to justify Trainwreck's huge contract and he wasn't the only streamer on their payroll if twitch wasn't going to let them use the platform to attract customers then they would have to create their own platform it's very evident that this was their intent as well i'm looking at kick's website right now and the top category for streaming is just chatting that's actually pretty normal and it's the top category on twitch as well but looking back and forth between the two sites i do see a few differences not a lot because kicks ui is literally identical to twitch's but there are a few key differences in the top 10 categories right now after just chatting on twitch the top categories are all kinds of video games that you'd expect to see gta 5 isn't it amazing that gta 5 has been out like 10 years 10 years and it's still so popular it's a great game league of legends valorant and so on gta is also in the top 10 on kick but instead of second but instead of second place it's in third behind slots and casino also in kick's top 10 are just sleeping and pools hot tubs and bikinis it seems the kick is meant to cater to a different type of audience and there's nothing inherently wrong with that while allegedly in my personal opinion the whole operation could be seen as intentionally being unprofitable to serve as a loss leader and tax shelter designed to drive new customers to stake that doesn't mean that the platform itself has to be terrible i think it's it's just i don't think like lost leader and all that stuff i don't it, it's just like they got ki like obviously twitch was like a major generator of customers they have basically an infinity pool of money so they can just start their own thing promote the hell out of it spend a lot of money on it attract people across and then make their own twitch it's like i don't like it it feels a little bit like blood money but it's a very good business decision. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? When a site has a community-driven content, the platform will be as good or as bad as the community chooses to make it, and the community seems to have made their decision. Never-ending control. Trainwreck was the first big streamer to jump to kick, almost certainly because of his working relationship with Stake. There's speculation he's a part owner, or at least heavily involved in the company, though I haven't found any evidence of this. But kick wasn't going to stop there. They needed to attract a bunch of other high-profile streamers to their site, and they were going to do it by offering them deals that would make professional athletes jealous. And if you want to make waves, you've got to start big. To that end, one of kick's first big signings was one of the men responsible for the world's first ever double bong cloud seen in competitive play 
I'm of course talking about chess grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura. What the f- I've never heard of this. Oh, shocker. Okay, fine. That's not the most exciting signing to a lot of people, but it was still a big deal because he was offered a non-exclusive contract that would allow him to stream simultaneously on Twitch and Kick. He wasn't alone either. A few months later, Kick signed XQC to a two-year, non-exclusive contract for $70 million, with incentives that could take it up to $100 million. That is $50 million a year. Non-exclusive. That's insane. That's, in, that's an insane amount of money. I'm beginning to question my life choices. It was the largest streaming deal ever, and it wasn't even exclusive. Two days later, they also signed Amaranth for another. They also signed Amaranth for an undisclosed sum. Those are two huge names, but there was another big name that was actually signed even before Hikaru, allegedly for what was the largest ever streaming deal until XQC was signed. Kick signed a massive, non-exclusive deal with Aiden Ross. Aiden's no stranger to controversy, having been banned from Twitch seven times for a variety of reasons before joining Kick. Trouble again followed him to Kick when both he and Trainwreck decided to livestream the fucking Super Bowl. That sounds like a copyright nightmare. <laughs> get in trouble for that. You'd think so, but no. The platform had only existed for two months, and already they were risking being sued by the NFL. Obviously, the NFL's broadcast disclaimer of any use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Apparently, they just thought that was overreaching nonsense. However, the legal consensus seemed to be that the NFL certainly would have a case against Kick. There's no reporting about anything coming of it, so perhaps the matter was settled quietly, as is often the case. Yeah. Yeah. Like, in my opinion, for sure. But despite, because they got so much money, they've got so much money because they're running like a dodgy ass, in my opinion, in my opinion, and not like legally dodgy, I'm sure it's all above board in Belize. <laughs> Where the fuck it is? Like, it's a crypto casino. <laughs> in my opinion, allegedly. <laughs> according to some people. But despite taking place just two months into Kick's existence, this wasn't even the site's first big controversy. That took place in the site's first month when streamer Suspenders allegedly banged a sex worker live on his stream. What the f What's funny, Biggs? Oh, nothing, sir. Oh, do please share your little joke with the rest of us. I mean, obviously, something frightfully funny is going on. The clips have all been deleted, so it's possible the actual sex took place off camera, but he definitely at least seems to have appeared nude on camera himself, and there were no repercussions from Kick for any of this at all. There also weren't any consequences a few months later, when Suspenders again had sex on his stream. This time, the action definitely took place off camera, and nobody appeared nude on the broadcast, so that part's fine at least. What made people so upset this time around was that they were having sex in the corner of a tiny hotel room while her child was sitting on the bed and playing with a smartphone. Are you smoking crack? Meth is a hell of a drug. What the f***? Stay off the internet! Aiden Ross also sparked controversy again for streaming other people's content on his channel. But this time, it wasn't the Super Bowl, it was straight up porn. Dude loaded up Pornhub into his browser and asked chat what videos they wanted to watch. That sounds like an ethical and copyright nightmare, although nowhere as bad as the kid playing the, on the bed. What the f***? Keep in mind that I've seen videos of Aiden being accosted by his fans while walking in public, and their average age is about 12. The hits didn't stop there for Aiden either. He was scrolling through videos or memes or whatever on his Discord channel and started watching one that seemed harmless. It started off with a tree being cut down and then suddenly cut to an image of a naked girl with her back drenched in semen. The video claimed that the image was Aiden's sister taken from her recently created OnlyFans page. F it out. This wasn't actually the case, and the two release statements clarifying that it wasn't her on screen appeared on his stream. You'd think Aiden would learn his lesson from that and never blindly watch videos from his Discord on his stream again, but you would be wrong. About a week later, he was doing it again, and this time his fans really did get him to look at a video from his sister's OnlyFans. Come on! Ah. Uh. He immediately recognized it as a sister and walked away from the stream. After staring at the video for exactly 8.54 seconds, let's just have a pause to uh, appreciate how long 8.45 seconds is. You ready? That's how long Aiden was looking at his sister. Keep that in mind. <laughs> By this point, you might be thinking there's nothing somebody on Kick could do that would receive any sort of punishment. That's what streamer Heel Mike thought as he decided to test those limits. How are you testing these limits for? There are people streaming the Super Bowl and having sex in the corner of a hotel room while there's a child there. What limits are there more? Heel Mike, are you gonna like murder someone on stream? Please don't do that. That's 
fucked up. His envelope pushing stunt culminated with letting his 25,000 view viewers watch him receive a blowjob live on stream. Remember 10 minutes ago when we were all worried about what turning kids into degenerate gamblers was? What a simpler time that was. There were also plenty of controversies with Kick involving all sorts of racist, homophobic, anti Semitic, anti trans rants and content, but we'd be here all day if we tried to cover all of that. Instead, we'll end with the most recent controversy the platform is facing at the time of writing, though I'm sure by the time this video actually comes out, there'll have been several more headline grabbing controversies. Ice Poseidon is a streamer who's tried out every platform. He was on Twitch before being permanently banned, but then went to YouTube, then Mixer, then back to YouTube, and now he's on Kick. And on September the 21st, he had a bold idea for an exciting new content to stream. He was going to give some random guy $500 to hire a sex worker and stream the encounter while he and his friend hid in another room. I don't really understand why people will find this content engaging. They didn't, because they're children. They're children. It's crazy. This is indeed a disturbing universe. Aiden's already made sure that Kick's viewer base was aware Pornhub exists, so you could just watch some well-crafted videos instead of whatever the fuck was going on with this. Anyway, Ice Poseidon had his plan, and they were sticking to it. While this is weird and vaguely creepy content that doesn't need to exist, it's not vaguely creepy, it's straight creepy. To his credit, I will say that Ice went about it in as good a way as possible, I guess. When he called to set up the date with a woman, he asked beforehand if it was okay to film it. She said it was fine, but would cost an extra hundred dollars and confirmed that she didn't care what he did with the video when she showed up and was greeted by the rando the camera was pointed out to her and she was informed that it was live streaming at first she seemed okay with this but she didn't understand the gravity of the situation most likely she thought it was some random nobody streaming to his five friends or whatever but as they sat on the couch and started to get a little frisky she received text messages on her phone somebody who knew her must have seen the stream or something because the messages informed her that it was a setup she discovered that over ten thousand people were watching and there were two people hiding in in the other room. Understandably uncomfortable this situ with the situation and with whatever those two other people had in store, she decided it was time to go. That's when the random guy decided he was going to block the door since she'd already been paid. Bro. Fortunately, she was able to force her way past him and out of the door. You may be asking yourself where Kick's moderation teams, assuming they exist, or other personnel were. Surely they must have been aware of what was going on on their site. Right? Well, yes, they absolutely were aware. In fact, Stake co-founder and Kick CEO Ed Craven was watching the stream live as it happened, spamming chat with laughing emotes while the guy blocked the door so the woman couldn't leave. What was your name? What the fuck you up to, Ed? Based on that, I think it's fair to say that this supposed Twitch killer has not seen its last controversy, but hey, it turns out that it is possible to actually get banned from Kick. As far as I can tell, former streamer, streamer Rhino holds the distinction of being the only person to get permanently banned from the platform. What the f did he do? Because we've seen some shit, haven't we? No, no, you don't want to see him. <laughs> All it took was trying to pay an underage girl to send him explicit. What the f is going on? Oh, that's where the video ends. What the f is going on? The internet's crazy. What the fuck's Queeby? No one knows.